Understanding how light or dark something is, is so essential to good drawing. The reason is that not only do you have to identify how light or dark something is in what you're seeing, but you need to be able to translate that accurately to your drawings. And the first step to mastering how light or how dark something is, is to master the value scale. And that's what we're going to do in this mini lesson. light or dark a color is. For example, you can look at multiple reds and you will notice that some of those are lighter in value and some of those are darker in value. We would describe some as light red and some as dark red. Light and dark is one element of color. So how light or dark that color is, is going to affect your ability to match that color, to see the color and to paint that color. We are going to make a nine step value scale to start off our color theory exercises. Now we use a nine step value scale for a few reasons. One is that it's a very standard value range that people in ateliers use. So if you get used to using a nine step value scale, it'll be easy to communicate with other people because if you say, oh, that's a value seven or that's a value two, other people will have an idea of what that means because it's a somewhat standardized system within the ateliers. Another reason to work with a nine step value range we're gonna talk about momentarily and that is halfway between one and nine is five, halfway between five and nine is seven, and halfway between five and seven is six. And they're very easily dividable ways to think about value. The first thing you wanna do is draw nine boxes on your paper. Now I've just taped up some computer paper here. I have a black colored pencil. If you don't have a black colored pencil, a regular pencil is just fine. So what I'm gonna do is create a scale with nine boxes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And I'm gonna go ahead and number these boxes as well. Now, it's important, especially if this is your first time working with a value scale, to make sure you understand what the one represents and what the nine represents. The one is gonna represent the brightness of our paper or the white of the paper. So I'm gonna just make a note down here um, that this is gonna be our whitest value. The nine is actually gonna be our darkest value. So I'm gonna just make a note down here to remind myself that nine is the darkest end of the scale. Now, what I'm gonna do first is put my white and my black in on my value range. And my white is already done because it's the white of the paper. So I'm going to go ahead and fill in my black with the darkest I can get my color pencil to go. And it's really important that you layer in the value here. You'll notice that I am layering the black colored pencil down. The reason I'm layering it is that if you try to go for the darkest that you can right away and you just really scribble it in there, it flattens the tooth of the paper and it actually won't hold as much value as it could otherwise do. So by layering it, it prevents the paper from losing its texture, which actually holds on to the value. Take a look at this super zoomed in picture of what paper looks like when you're up really, really close to it. Do you see all of those ridges? What we wanna do is make sure that the pencil or the colored pencil or the crayon or the charcoal is filling in all those ridges because the more you can layer in value in between all those bumps and ridges, the darker your value will be on the paper and the paper will be able to hold more of the crayon or the charcoal or the pencil when you layer it in in that way. We now have our white and our black. So we have our value one, which is the white of the paper, and our black, which is the darkest our color pencil can go. One of the reasons we use a nine step value scale is that halfway between one and nine is five. So it's a really good idea to do your five value next. And the reason for that is that you can make sure that your five value is visually halfway between the white of your paper and the darkest that your pencil can go. So I'm gonna start layering in some value here. And as I'm doing it, I'm asking myself the question, is it visually closer to the white? Is it visually closer to the black? Or is it actually at the halfway point? 
This is my first layer of my value five. If I were to stop here, do you see how this is much, much closer to my value one than it is to my value nine? That means visually it's not at the halfway point yet. I need to keep going. This is closer, but it's still much closer to the white value than it is to the black. And remember that I need it to be at the halfway point visually. So I'm just gonna keep layering it in there and sneaking up on it. You'll see that I'm doing it in layers because I'm not sure exactly where the value five is. So by sneaking up on it and just making small adjustments to my value, I have a better chance of hitting it without overshooting it. So this is feeling a lot better to me. This is about halfway between my value one and my value nine. The next uh, value I'm gonna go for is going to be halfway between my one and my five. And halfway between my one and my five is my value three. So I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna think about, okay, here's my value one, here's my value five. I need my value three to be at the halfway point between one and five. So the lighter you make it, the lighter you need to um, press on your pencil or colored pencil or whatever medium you're using. So we're trying to extract values out of our tools by adjusting the pressure on our hands. This is my first guess at what my value three is, but it's still a little closer to my white than it is to my value five. So I'm just gonna make it a tiny bit darker, but it's important that I only go a little bit darker. I don't wanna accidentally go too dark. That feels pretty good now. Now my value three feels about halfway between one and five. I'm going to keep working in this way, trying to find the halfway points between my halfway points. So between my five and my nine is my seven. And now I'm going to try to find the visual halfway point. How dark is it between five and nine? Because these are mini lessons, I'm gonna go ahead and speed through this process, but don't worry, we'll make sure to give you all the information you need. You'll notice that occasionally I am kind of pushing my head back uh, away from my paper to evaluate where I am in the process. So I'm working on the value four right now and up close, I felt like, okay, that's pretty good. But when I bring my eyes back from my paper, my four is almost exactly the same value as my three right now. So sometimes you have to kind of put distance between yourself and your paper in order to see the value. Uh, another trick is to kind of squint your eyes. Squinting helps uh, the values kind of be more clear as well. So those are two tricks to help you see your value well. And this is our nine step value scale. Uh, we have one as our value white, and nine as our darkest value, our blackest value, and all the values in between. Now, when you're doing this at home, I made this maybe look easy. I have done many, many value scales. It's not uncommon when you're doing a value scale for the first time to make some common mistakes. So I wanna talk about some of those now so to help you avoid those mistakes. The most common thing that my students do when I'm teaching them how to do a value scale, and it doesn't matter if they are my five-year-old students or my 50-year-old students, is that they tend to skew the entire value scale too dark. And what I mean by that is their value five will often be a value seven or a value eight. And what happens is all of a sudden you have to get three more values in here um, at very, very small increments of change. And then all of a sudden you're making really big jumps up here in your ones, twos, threes, and fours. So by finding the visual halfway first and the halfway between the halfway, I have found that that helps my students immensely 
at getting accurate values. So you wanna make sure that every jump on your scale is about the same jump as what becomes before and after it. So you want the jump between one and two to be comparable to the value change between eight and nine, and et cetera throughout the entire uh, unit here. I would say my biggest jump right now is between my value four and my value three, and it looks like I could darken my value three just a touch, so I'm gonna do that now. Now, changing my value three just now was not a very big change. It was a very light layering in there, but it makes a big difference. And it's important to remember that value scales are a lesson in nuance, and it will take practice and control of your material to get a clean, evenly stepped value scale. <laughs>